If Murray had supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. <laughs> 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 Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grime Eric Show. Um, maybe the last show before the Eclipse Opalix. I mean, <laughs> what's with all the uh, Eclipse Apocalypse stuff this time around? I really don't get I, it. I know it's crazy. Eh? Well, there's some really interesting stuff, and I think part of it is because of the other Eclipse, right? And in the middle, like people are really dissecting the middle of those two. It's creating a whole meme on the internet about the. I can't remember what they're called. I think it now. could be a coincidence. Arca- Archaics is all over it too. Have you seen that graphic from Archaics? No. What does he think is going to happen? Should we stay home? Oh, he's no, no. I don't think. I don't think so. I mean, I think it'd be great. I wonder, I wonder if I can find that graphic. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna show it on our other show on Grey America on our roundup, but you know, there's so much Canadian stuff going on. I, you know, I'd like to get into some of this esoteric stuff too, but we've got so much other stuff to talk about that's going on with carbon tax, you know, uh, conspiracy, uh, well, controversies. And, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of people bitching about it right now. Oh, for roundup, you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of, uh, of climate change, we're supposed to get another th- a foot of snow on Thursday. So really interesting. Yeah. So that'd be like two and a half feet of snow so far. Yeah. Since, uh, well, not instantly. Yeah. But, you know, what's this? Is this archaic stuff? I mean, yeah, no one's really like, watched this. No, but just for audio, I mean, you can see that he's got like, you know, this is you, some of the stuff is what you've talked about with the difference between the, the two eclipses and what's in the middle of it. Right. So he's got, you know, February eighth. The first uh, vax, right? What? I mean, in we the, can say vax. <clears throat> yeah, in the middle of uh, in the middle of that is when Trump announced it. But also there was uh, there was something else going on too. Uh, Biden elected by electoral college over Trump, total eclipse, and so that was that was uh, right in the center. South no, America wait. had a total. South America had a total oh. eclipse, I guess. So the the total eclipse in South America is right between the the North America ones, I guess, is what he's saying. And then he says, "So get this: the total eclipse in North America back in 2017. That's the one that you saw. It passes over seven Salem's and Chesterfield, where Pfizer vax was made. So that's what that's the other, <laughs> the other big thing. So it's one of the it passes over a town where the vax was made as well. It's pretty interesting." So it gets pretty. Wow, we both know the vax was made way before that, and it says three Otherwise separate. It was packages. impossible. Well, I mean, maybe okay, packaged where it was packaged. Then I mean, no, I dude, understand. no. Remember, I didn't you see the thing where Buddy did the math on to yeah. eat, like to yeah. even like get that shit out the door if it wasn't like in crates ready to go? There's no way. Yeah. yeah. Three separate mathematically connected total eclipses is three days of darkness over America. So he's going back to like the three days of darkness thing, right? Ah. So, so the the April eighth total eclipse, ten days of darkness, wasn't it? So get so get this. This is no, uh, I don't know now. Now you've got me wondering. So remember, I said the cities that the first one passed through. Well, this one passes through seven Ninevehs. I mean, how can there even be seven Ninevehs in America? That's crazy. Nineveh. Oh, maybe maybe that's not in America. That's seven Ninevehs altogether. Jonah, darkness darkens Chesterfield. That's again where the vax is made. So I guess I feel like this is coming off the rails. I the can't, epicenter uh, of totality for both eclipses, New Madrid area, Nineveh connected to Pfizer and 1776 Empire. Nah, this is crazy. This is like this. 
You know, I still have on my wall one of these like color coded. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. What are they like? The conspiracy maps, remember? Yeah, yeah. That, that was, they were all the rage back in the day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this thing sits directly in front of my weed smoking station. And dude, okay. so it's been there right in front of my spot, my altar, where I'm several times a day for what? December, January, February, March. So four months now, right? Four full yeah. months. Yeah. 120 days i've looked at this thing five six times a day yeah yeah yeah. there's no rhyme or reason to this there's just like writing some stuff and like the arrows don't really connect anything it's just like uh it's uh i don't know i don't know what the word i'm looking for yeah there there was rhyme or reason there there was categories and stuff and and there is categories but they don't really there's it's not like a map to anything you know what i mean it's just sort of like uh a collection of buzzwords and well, well, let me coherent form. Well, let me let me let me finish this a bit because th- there is some interesting stuff in here too. Like in 2020, so he's going in in 2020. Apollo Pharmakia attacked mankind. First horseman, first seal broken on Greek Olympiad. The calendar wearing white with an arrow. Now on next Olympiad, mankind is now attacked by Apollo Helios. The second seal breaks. Apollo's consort Coronis merges with Helios in eclipse to form a corona. But let me but let me get this other just just there's three other things for each each eclipse that happens. So January what is he what has he got here? January, okay, so so January 30th, 2020, the WHO announced the coronavirus outbreak 1530 days to to the, the eclipse that we're going to, okay? 153, a divisor of 2448. Hundred, uh, which is 1447 BCE, the 10 plagues and the Exodus date. On February 11th, 2020, coronavirus called COVID-19 exactly 1518 days. That's 138 times 11, which is, which is Jason's uh, Phoenix event. So that's 138 times 11 days before the eclipse. 138 is Phoenix darkness number and 11 is disorder. And then 430, 2020. Trump admin announced Operation Warp Speed. COVID-19 vax 1440 days to 4924. Ramadan of Islam over 4924. First day of Ugadi, New Year of Hindu calendar. So he's he's got a whole bunch of different things connected with it as, as well. And then he gets into Purge and the Ukraine. Uh, Boeing 77 that crashes. Malaysia Air. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy. Malaysia Air? Pretty quick too, yeah. Anyways, oh, there's so been a lot of people, a lot of lot of stuff to, going on about the eclipse. And then did you, did you see Na- NASA's warning it themselves about it? <laughs> like, was that weird? Did you listen to the the official guy from NASA, that old guy? He's like, yeah, really strange things happen with the eclipse. You know, take a look around. Birds stop singing. Roosters start crowing. He and he's like, yes, there's strange things. So. Well, yeah, that stuff does definitely happen. The cricket, you know, but he was saying strange. He kept saying strange, but then referencing nature. Like, well, is that really that strange, dude? But he did mention some other stuff as well. Anyways, we should get into the details of this eclipse at the canyon because this is our last intro before the eclipse, which is coming up on on the eighth, right? And we're going to a little camping festival. We're hosting it from the seventh to the ninth. Um, VIP is on the sixth, right? But that's sold out. So this is like, you know, music and presentations and comedians and art and all kinds of stuff. Camping. So live music by $50 Dynasty. They're doing like their, their, this is the first live band since the release of Procession, I think. And it's like a, it's an album release thing, isn't it? Because they're, they're releasing the vinyl officially. It's the official album release party. Correct. Yeah. Henry Invisible, the Josh Glenn Experiment, Yosh and Jim, y- Yosh and Yimmy. Justin Langston, Sucka Please, and Unpaved. Guest speakers for live presentations, David Matheson, Ben from Uncharted X, Russ and Kyle Allen, and Luke Caverns. Artists, Danielle Villarreal, Becca Erickson, Abby McMillan, and James Payne. And then Big Laugh Comedy presents Kit Hudson, Dakota Pacheco, Jack Stoltman, Darian Irwin, and our buddy Owen will be there too, Owen Hunt. 
So yeah, it's like kid zone, food trucks, entertainment, camping, toilets, all that stuff will be there. And we will be there too. We will have probably like a little bit of time. Great American friends will have a little bit of a time, I guess, uh, to kill some time on stage there at one point or another. Do you have any plans for us? Jokes? No. No? No? Are you just planning on me just filling that up? I could just bust your balls for a few minutes, you know, tell some jokes, maybe get some questions going. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll 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 figure figure it out. out. We'll figure it out on the fly. I mean, there's a lot of this, like, weird esoteric eclipse stuff. I mean, maybe we should talk about some of those, the deeper conspiracies that some of the presenters aren't talking about, like Jason Bashir's stuff. Maybe. <laughs> maybe we don't want to do that right before the, maybe, you know, if I, yeah. <laughs> that's more of an after. Yeah. After when nothing happens, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. When it does happen, it's kind of like, oh, shit, son. But it's weird when you get all that because there's so much about the sun, right? How the sun is so important. And when it, when it gets blocked like that during the day, it is kind of weird, right? Like a lot of stuff apparently does happen after eclipses. So. Really? Yeah. Like what? Like wars and stuff and like real bad stuff. Huh. That's, that's the word on the, on the internet. Well, it's pretty worry right now. <laughs> exactly. I feel like it can, you know, it'd be tough to make it worse. Like, oh, fuck, we wrecked it. Oh, yeah, there's day passes now, too. So so if people are in Texas and they want to come for the, for a day pass, they can do that. It doesn't have to be three nights or two nights. So there you have it, guys. I mean, so, you got to inter- sign up. Yeah. Interesting uh, on this this show about UFOs and disclosure with Ron Janix. He's he's like the owner of uh, Contact in the Desert, so pretty sort of big guy in the field there and all that. We talk a lot about interdimensional stuff and all that, and and you know we've talked about owls a lot. So apparently you have some owls in your yard that are that you're watching. Are you sure they're not watching you? I haven't seen them watching me. I mean, he was definitely she was definitely watching me today when I was putting the trail cam up by the nest. She was like flying around from thing to thing and going, Ooh, really? Ooh. Yeah. Watching you do it. Like where, how close did you put the cam? Like, I was probably, you know, 12 or 15 feet away. It's across on a different tree. Oh, interesting. Pointing down and in down and in, you know? So did she, do you think she senses something's up with that or? Well, no, the cam's been there for a while. It's just like you can't, it, it didn't have as good of an angle into the nest. And I wasn't sure if there's an egg or not. And then it snowed and all that. So then it just got nice again. And then it was like, uh, it was easy to do stuff again because it snowed a bunch. So we kind of got onto it and then it snowed a bunch. And yeah. But now we've confirmed that there is an egg in the nest. So. Well, you have to keep an eye on some strain, like if there's anything, you know, high strangeness or anything like that. Because maybe, maybe, you know, maybe these uh, ETs will come in or some other entity will come in and just take a, take a hold of that host because of the amazing eyesight and hearing that owls have. The amazing senses, they'll use it as a vehicle. Do you think? And then what yeah. will they do? They'll just spy on you. On me, specifically? Yeah. yeah. Why? Because you're on the show. <laughs> and she turns around to look out of his window. <laughs> Imagine if the owl was right there right now. Would that be trippy? I don't see any of that. <laughs> that would be like a Carl Jung, uh, you know, size synchronicity. If you turn around and the owl is like watching you. <laughs> well, I mean, it's going to be a good trip. We're just a couple days away now. We leave, of course, here on Thursday morning. Travel all day. Get down there. Come back. Tuesday, next week's show will be late. Oh, yeah. Not really late, just a day or two. Yeah. Get home, get settled. Are you leaving? Because, yeah, you're driving back, so probably Wednesday. Yeah. But we'll, uh, it'll come out when it comes out. We'll, it'll, you know, we won't skip it. It'll just be late, and then we'll be back on track. So um, we'll be talking about the eclipse next week. It looked like rain, but the forecast has cleared. So, we're into now. Oh, the final that's week. great. 
yeah, right now it's sunny. So we'll be obviously keeping a close eye on the forecast over the next seven days, but it's trending in the right direction. So we're going to have a time down in Utopia, Texas. We'd love for you to join us. Do it. Also support the show because uh, I think we do have some support to mention this week, right? Did I send it to you? Oh, yeah, that's right. I should get that ready. Yeah. Hmm. I thought they had even maybe sent you some, uh, what's it called as well? I think they both referenced you sending to sending you emails. I could be mistaken about that. Yeah. uh, Yeah, I got, I got to, no, you are mistaken. Yeah. I just got what you forwarded me. Oh, okay. Well, that's all I got too. Okay. So do you want to mention them? Sure. We have, uh, we want to thank Chris, Chris, Chris B. Are we supposed to say last name? Thanks, Chris B. Yeah. Chris B, 555 US. Thank you very much. We really appreciate that. $5.55. And and also, this is uh, from Sean. Sean D, 40 US. Actually, I will read a little something from Sean. Um, Listening to the show, you guys confirmed you were going to Cosmic Summit in North Carolina. He said uh, he donated, made some offers some time back would like to make an offer a donation again, but he, so he's talking about a rental house that he has an Airbnb in the mountains. So, um, I mean, I don't think we'll be able to do it, but I will put a link for this Airbnb in the show notes, just in case it seems really cool. Great hikes, waterfalls, access to the great smoky mountain national park. Um, we have start, they have Starlink there so you can work there. If you, um, Da, 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 da. He doesn't expect a plug or anything. But anyways, yeah, I just wanted to mention it. You may say its name. The name of it is Stargazer's Retreat. If you're interested, let me know sooner than later so I can reserve uh, the dates. Da, da, da. So I'll put this in the thing because I, I won't be using it, but maybe other people will want to. Yeah, I guess it's uh, so it's about four hours away, though. So it is a bit of a jaunt, but still. During the Cosmic Summit? Yeah, exactly. Mom, you could always go down early. Work from there. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I just don't think that's going to happen. You just have to euthanize the cats. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. Or find a baby or something. (laughs) The cats are bored, so they're going to get euthanized. (laughs) Did you hear that? What's that? No. There was controversy over the... In Europe and, and, uh, and in Canada... That uh, people are just bored, so they're getting euthanized because they're bored. I could see it. I mean, there's not really nothing good on TV. And uh, the, I don't know what people do. I really don't know what the average person's day is. I just feel like I just work, and uh, that's it. And hang out with my kids and my family and, you know, hunt. Season will come around, and I'll take a lot of time off work and hunt them. But the other few seasons, I really feel like I just, uh, you know, when you do this kind of stuff, your work becomes your hobby. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's a real blending of the lines. So anyway, uh, it's going to be a time. Support the show. Grandamerica.ca slash support. We need more supporters. We really do. We could use some, some more one-time donators and some more monthlies. And that's why we started reading the stuff on the show to try and entice you guys to either make those one-time donations or alternatively sign up for monthly buck, two, three, four, five. You decide you can just put in whatever you want as a monthly. You can pick your own amount. You can use Stripe if you don't like PayPal. And if you're getting some value, I mean, this will be like episode six, 649. With no ads. 49 no episodes. Ads. With no ads. None of that. No bull crap. Just our own ads for our own stuff that we're doing. Just our own ads for our own stuff. And, uh, you know, it's all there. It's all free. There's all no paywalls. There's no nothing. So you can go get all 650 episodes free. And if you're getting some value from those 650 episodes, it's got to be, you know, approaching 2,000 hours of content. Georgeamerica.ca slash support and uh, pay us whatever you think it's worth to you. Whatever 
It helped you through a drive. Maybe it's worth a buck. A long drive, ten bucks. And if you like, <clears throat> if you like UFOs, I mean, geez, we've done a whole bunch of great UFO podcasts in that. Like, if you're new to the show and you like the UFO topic, you can go back and listen to like old Stanton Friedman or Dolan or um, Avi Loeb. A lot of a lot of uh, prominent UFO researchers, even Jock Valley. Right, we had him on Leslie Kane, um, Grant Cameron. I mean, the list it, it it goes deep. Some of the some of the old oldies and goodies, oldies and goodies. I mean, oldies and goodies. Check it out. Of course, adultbrain.ca. If you guys like audiobooks, you want to check out that stuff. There's a bunch of different way to get the audiobooks. <laughs> and contact at thecabin.com. There's other trips. We have a trip in the fall coming up here in Canada, and two trips with Randall Carlson, which are amazing trips. Everyone loves them. And it's good to get those trips in now because, you know, who knows what's going on in our things are getting a little communisty out there. So it's just best to travel and get that kind of stuff. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah, follow do your it. dreams now. Follow your dreams, bitches. I think, uh, and of course, by America Outlaw.ca, we have that whole other podcast. There's like 200, over 200 episodes over there now where we do yep. roundup, weekly roundups of the Canadian news the Canadian newscape and stuff like that. And then we do those other YouTube channels as well. Uh, Adult Brain Audiobooks YouTube channel and Outlaw Canadians YouTube channel that you guys could subscribe to for us and share them around. That'd be helpful. I could probably... I think that's about it. Well, let's mention the three books that got released. Uh, book, our audiobooks. Books, oh, okay, all right. The Tao Te Ching, and it's got a different narrator. Mike, Michael is the narrator on that one. He's a great uh, reader. Yeah, to you. Ralph Waldo Emerson, Self Reliance. That was by Darren. And also Aleister Crowley, Book of the Law is out there too. For people who want to know all the genesis of Crowley stuff. Don't you have to call him Mr. Smith? Because he's a teacher. <laughs> I was Smith. thinking the other day about back in the day how uh, all the, you know, I did those teachers, uh, it's a weird dynamic when you're a kid with a teacher. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, because then you grow up and then you're just on, there's no more weird dynamic with any other adults, but you're probably still with a teacher. I moved away, so I don't like, I have a couple of my old teachers on Facebook. That's kind of weird, you know? You just kind of always, it's even weird calling them by the first name still, you know? They'll always just be whatever, you know? Do you remember me talking about my college teacher? Uh, UFO, my UFO teacher. Right. Yeah. No, right. not really. Right. It's another UFO topic. Remember, I was thinking about him, and and then and the days later, I bumped into him in Starbucks. Like it was a total synchronicity, and then he was like looking at me like I'm crazy. Like I remembered him, and I don't think he remembered me. And but but that is that in some ways that is the genesis to this podcast because he told me about Benjamin Grundy back then of Mysterious Universe. How weird is that? And now he thinks you're a fucking nut job. No, no. He, he, he thought of it then, probably, in Starbucks, when I was like, hey, you remember me? I was in your ufology class. Because we had a ufology class in college. But you guys never became buddies. But yeah, I had some favorite teachers in school. Like, we had Mr. McLeod was my favorite. He was a Scottish guy, and he, he made haggis for us. And he was, like, he was the best. There were some really good, like, really good teachers. I didn't. I can't. You know, I had a couple decent teachers. I ain't going to give any of them shout outs. So they all figured I was just head going nowhere. So fuck all y'all. Fucking losers. <laughs> anyway, we love you guys for listening. It'd be even better if you supported the show. Look at me now, motherfuckers. And uh, we're going to keep this short and sweet because we got a busy week. We're jam packed, getting all our podcasts ready, all our stuff in a row, a couple days of traveling. Come to the eclipse. If you can't, We'll tell you all about it next week. We'll take some videos. We'll put some videos up on our YouTube channel for you guys to watch. And, uh, you know, but it's not the same as being there. There's still time. You can even get a day ticket if you want. So do it, motherfuckers. Other than that, enjoy the chat. I mean, I didn't even really know how how, uh, how kind of UFO famous this guy was. But uh, yeah, well, he's, he's a big deal, I guess. Well, he's the co-owner and producer and host of Contact in the Desert, the world's largest UFO-themed conference. He's also a member of the board of directors of the newly launched Hollywood Disclosure Alliance, headquartered in L.A. 
So there you go. That's that's all I'll read. I, I mean, I, I don't want to go back too far back into his his past, but he's obviously been interested in the topic for decades, and now he's directly involved. So it's great. Directly involved, guys. Enjoy the chat with the fabulous Ron Janix. Captain Ron, welcome to Great America. I don't, we've never had you on before, but thanks for joining us. Absolutely, guys. I really appreciate it. Getting get to, uh, ready for the big show here. Yeah. We get to talk to like the, the owner of the biggest UFO conference in the world, probably in the world, I would assume. As far as we know, yeah, it's pretty big. We've got uh, 75 speakers this year. Oh, wow. Holy our, our goal was to pull it back to 50. We had like 60 last year and we said, well, we're going to pull it back to 50. And, uh, as of this morning, we're at 75 and, you know, it's our 10 year anniversary. So we ended up just sort of adding a few folks and it just kind of kept going and kept going. Right. Right. Well, that's good. I mean, if you can do, if you can do that, I mean, I know it's kind of, you know, it's, it's sort of sketchy with or risky with, with conferences, with all the expenses and all that. But I mean, if you can get that many people and draw in the crowd, then that'll be a great one. I like how you've set up all the panels. You've got like really big panels with, with special um, uh, topics. That would be, you know, awesome to attend those. We're doing uh, 14 panels this year, <laughs> and uh, one of them is going to be legends, and we're just doing all the, like, legendary guys. Like, we actually have Whitley Strieber there, and, uh, you know, um, George Norrie's going to sit on that, Linda Moulton Howe, uh, let's see, Dolan. Russell Targ, and, you know, George or, uh, Richard Dolan. It's going to be really great to have all those guys have done so much you know, Travis Walton, Travis Walton and Whitley Strieber. I mean, these are pioneer guys that have changed the the face of this whole community. Yep. Yep. So you, did you, so you've had this for a year. Is it just a year now? So you, you yeah, we bought it literally before. about a year ago, me yeah. and Gordon, Gordon Peckrell. He used to run the Megacon UFO mega conference out of Laughlin. Yep. And, uh, and we took this, well, we kind of did it in conjunction with the previous owners last year. And then, so this is our first year alone, okay. and it's the 10-year anniversary of the live conference. Contact actually started like in 2010, but then, you know, COVID shut it down, and they tried to do it live, uh, virtual one oh, year, right, and right. then they've been shut down since. So we brought it back last year, and then now we're going to do the 10-year anniversary of the live conference, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're, we're really getting excited now because we're starting to get close, and you can kind of feel people are all like buzzing about it a little bit. Yeah. So this is at the end of May, right? May 30th. May 30th. It's a five-day event now. We actually have five days of content. You know, we're, oh we, we added a, 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 a free track on Monday. So people that stay for the intensives and the one-on-one -on -one type of uh, intensives on Monday, they now have a choice to go to a free track, which is going all day as well. So, I mean, it's really five days of content, and it's great because all these guys, you know, talk to each other as well. It's fun seeing different speakers with different research collaborate and talk about, you know, what they're working on. Yeah, exactly. And it's got a wide, I guess you've got a wide variety. I mean, this isn't just about one aspect of the phenomena. This is everything, right? It's everything. It's a, everything, you know, we're fo focused a lot this year on, on ufology and, and disclosure of course has a lot coming on. I'm sure you guys saw there's no need for that because the Pentagon came out and said that don't worry about it. It's all, it's all real. There's no aliens. There's no UFOs. So yeah, yeah. Aside from that report, uh, many of our researchers obviously are working on that. And disclosure has been huge lately. It's been in the news. There's been a bunch of guys talking to Congress. We've got congressional hearings on this now. 
So we're going to do a lot about the the movement that's happening within government right now and the actual steps towards actual, you know, big D disclosure. So this is so different than when, like I was telling you before we started the show about, I volunteered in, in UFO Congress, which was probably, probably, but might've been the biggest back then. Or I'm not sure it was, it was fairly big. 2013 UFO Congress. And I mean, this has changed so much. The landscape has changed so much since then, like 10 years. And now, like you're talking about, now you've got a whole government aspect of it. This disclosure, disclosure thing. I don't even know how you keep up. I can't, I mean, not that I try to keep up, but I, I can't even, there's just so much going on. I can't even. There is, there's a lot of stuff happening and a lot of different, you know, viewpoints and takes on stuff too. So it's really fun to kind of get the different aspects and try to figure out I'm sure I know you guys cover things that are a little bit different, but even within those communities, I'm sure you have the same problem we have, like in the UFO community. It's the it's the misinformation, the disinformation, the nonsense that goes on that clouds up. So you kind of got to sift through that, pick pick which researchers seem to be the most on point and kind of find out, you know, what you feel is really happening. Yeah, yeah. Not not sort of attach your your whole belief system to any new information right away type stuff. I mean, there's a lot of, you, you mentioned a, a couple examples. I was listening to one of your shows and it's kind of the way I feel about it too. Just sort of watching it kind of like, you know, watching what's going on, but not really kind of getting too attached. Yeah, people to, like to jump on it. I mean, that's, that's the world today. Even sports stories, these guys, somebody signed, they, they, they want to be the first reporter to report on a, a signing or a trade or whatever. It's like, <laughs> slow down. Let's wait and see how this pans out, you know, and that it may not happen. And a lot of these things, you know, maybe that video's fake. Maybe it's a hoax. Maybe it's a, uh, who knows what it could be, but you know, I, I think, I think it's, it's best to um, use caution in this arena. Certainly. I, I don't like when people jump to its aliens. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's check all the other boxes first. And uh, if nothing else seems to work, then maybe it is aliens. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I just don't yeah, like to, yeah. it's a little presumptuous to jump with the alien thing. Did that, did that uh, AARO release surprise a lot of people in the community? It seemed to cause a bit of a, a bit of a shockwave. I mean, most people obviously were kind of like poo-pooing it right away, but. You mean the Pentagon report where they said that yeah. it's not real, there are no aliens? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's the exact same thing they've been saying for 50 years. And I feel like, um, that's ridiculous. I mean, just in the last five, six years since 2017, when we've had all those videos come out and all the stories come out, how, how can they say the same thing they did in 1947? There is no existence of extraterrestrial life as far as we know. I mean, you've got people, military witnesses, you know, listen, and I'm, I, I'm skeptical about this and I'm, I'm objective about this. And I, I look at this with common sense, but there, there's a lot of smoke here. I mean, it just seems kind of ridiculous that they would come out now. Feels kind of arbitrary to do that. Yeah, yeah, and that's coming from yourself. I, I, you know, you've you've been in this field for quite a while, and you haven't had any personal experiences. No. I don't think, right? Contact, anyways. Right? No, nothing like that. No, yeah. of course not. But I, uh, I, I still, I do still think that there's value there, and and and. I don't know why we dismiss all these people. I mean, there's a lot of extremely credible people um, making extraordinary claims. Why, why do we just dismiss that out of hand? And I'm a big person who believes that, you know, there's that guy, John Mack from Harvard University, the head of psychiatry for, for, for Harvard for years. You know, he did a lot of stuff in this. He wrote the book Abduction, and he studied this. And, you know, his conclusion was that the people that he looked at were not delusional that he felt something real must be going on. Why, why? Because it's this topic, do we just dismiss this guy? I mean, that guy got to that point for a reason. Now we've got Avi Loeb, the head of astronomy from Harvard, making some pretty bold didn't, claims that maybe these things are interstellar, maybe some of these things are extraterrestrial. Didn't why do we just dismiss that? Happen, happen with Avi? I thought something got classified or something got retracted or I thought something just happened with Avi. <laughs> I don't know. He did that thing with the with the little the new the balls they found in in the in the water, and uh, you know they're looking at those. Oh yeah, somebody came out and said that they were uh, something else. Um, I don't know why we can't just you know everybody slow down. Let's study this stuff. <laughs> 
let's decide what 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 it really is. You know what I mean? Let's have a little. I I I don't like both polar ends of these things. No, yeah, me either. Yeah. To dismiss things out of hand, I think, is just not being fair. Yeah. It's also not being fair to just say it's aliens constantly. I mean, I yeah. think that's just as ridiculous. But yeah, you know, <laughs> we try to we try to kind of get to the truth. That's at least our vision. Yeah. Yeah, Avi, Avi, I mean, he seemed to have that, that what, that Galileo thing going on, too, that seemed really interesting. Yeah, is that going now? We have several members, Mitch Randall and, and some others from, from the Galileo Project, which this is what we want. This is what I'm pushing for. We yeah. want to have people from Harvard in the Galileo Project researching and looking at this topic. I think at the very least, at the very least, the correct position on this should be it's worthy of further scientific That's study. That's exactly my stance. That's what I've been saying. I don't care about the government. I want it to. I want it to be acknowledged as a mystery by the scientific community. That's really it. Worthy of further study. Why? Why? Why does this topic, for some reason, I think what they did was such a successful uh, disinformation campaign back in the you know late forties and early fifties when they just kind of did the whole little green men tinfoil hat craziness and they've they've really ostracized people who have had experiences or seen objects and that has resonated for years and i think it was a very successful um way to keep people quiet about this and i think now let's be a little more grown up and realistic about it and and it's okay to talk about this why don't we look at it scientifically and why don't we why do we have all these military guys saying these things are they joking? These aren't the kind of guys that hoax. Why would these guys risk their reputation? These guys that are coming out with this information, you know, that David Fravor, that guy's, you know, you can't touch that guy. He's, 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 he's got such a great reputation. Why can't we listen to him and say that, Hey, look, I've never seen anything like this. Okay. Well, I, I think that a lot of people have been. I mean, when I, I, I was, I'm just new on Twitter. I'm new on X, right? It's, it hasn't even been a year yet. And I mean, I cannot believe the amount of researchers and I don't know whether they're armchair researchers or just like what UFO X or Twitter researchers. But I mean, compared to what it was like in 2013, 2014, 15, like before 2017, I guess you could say that was probably the, <clears throat> you know, that little line in the sand where the little D disclosure kind of started. But I can't believe how how many people are involved in this, and how many, I think it really it really is. People are accepting it in a, in a lot it's of ways. It's been growing for years. It exploded in 2017. You're right. I think that was a real landmark thing. And uh, if you know, do you know Steve Bassett? The, the yeah, lobbyist? yeah. Well, I, yeah, I talked to him he, a couple of times. I can't remember if he came on the show or not. Or if, he, know, he's so terrific, he, and he 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 looks at this topic more than than anyone. I think he's as well read as pretty much anyone on this topic. And he's constantly doing interviews and constantly reading all the articles. And he has told me in the last six to 12 months, it, it's it's tripled the amount of coverage in media and the amount of articles written about this tub subject. So that's fascinating. He's been looking at it for, you know, 25 years. So that's saying something. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at exactly. And just because the government, the Pentagon, well, not even the government, but the Pentagon doesn't want to acknowledge it. Uh, that could that could backfire in some ways. I mean, there's a lot of people kind of just poo-pooing it already. So you can imagine how this thing is. If they have such things, it it would be so buried. You can imagine, yeah. you know, within yeah, part, okay. department, within black budget, within you know. I can only imagine how deep this would go. And I've heard you kind of express the the, the feeling that like, why would they release it? Like the you know, I, I think you have a. A pretty negative view of the capital D disclosure, maybe. Um, I do. I am very uh, skeptical about that. Steve, of course, thinks it's going to happen, and I hope he's right. But I, I do not see a reason or an advantage or a motivation for the government to come out and say, oh, by the way, we have recovered an alien craft, and we know that there's aliens coming to our planet. What what does this serve? Unless the aliens are going to reveal themselves or another government's going to do it or there's some thing to push the needle to happen, I don't see an advantage for them to do that. If they did recover that craft and they they had that technology or whatever they're able to recover, maybe it's free energy or another type of energy or anti-gravity or whatever it may be that they've been able to glean from this discovery. What's the advantage of, of, of giving that up? 
Well, I think that their hand will be forced at some point. I mean, whether who the you know whether that's from some non-human intelligence or just people, more whistleblowers coming out or something. I, you know, they probably won't want to do it, but they're gonna. I think they're gonna have to at some point. Maybe to get on. Maybe to get ahead with the with some new energy or or some um, you know. Uh, let's say implementation of some new technology, you know, you, they, I would think they'd want to get ahead of that, you know, before it slips out away. from. Oh, they would want to own it. Wouldn't they, they wouldn't yeah, want to give it up. And maybe, maybe the oil companies are saying, Hey, don't do that. You know, and who really runs the world? You know what I mean? That's more your guys's area, but I think that that's, these are real considerations. And then is the minute they do that, think of all the lawsuits and all the problems because you lied to us. And, 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 and you ridiculed my father who was in the army and he said he saw this and you made him out to be a crazy person. And you could just imagine all the backlash that would come with a big D disclosure. So what, what is your thought about what, what's the ideal scenario for you to see then? Well, I mean, you know, I think what we're trying to do is to get to the truth. So I think, you know, we're doing the best we can by, by bringing together the people that we know that are out there studying this. Maybe they have contacts with people that are working on these things and, and, and bring them together to, to give us the closest we can get to the truth as we know it today. And, you know, they had the soul conference in November and, and there, there is stuff happening um, behind the scenes where people are talking about this and we are moving the needle closer to disclosure. The fact that Congress takes it serious, the fact that, that Senator Schumer wrote a UAP bill last year that's 70 pages long is incredible. That wouldn't have happened in 2016 even, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like things are moving in the right direction. Too slow for me. I always say it's glacial. I would really like to see things accelerate, but at least they are seem to be moving in the, in the right direction. That's all the stuff about catastrophic disclosure. You mean like caused by an alien or caused by? Yeah, or is that a Twitter? That might be like a Twitter meme thing or something. But well, yeah, Twitter's full of stuff. Yeah, I, I, and you mean caused by uh, like an ET or something? I think I think that's what they mean. Is is like less than you know, faster than a glacial pace of of somebody else controlling the disclosure, kind of out. I guess outside of whoever's controlling it now. I guess. Outside well, I guess you know, it. if it's an alien or interdimensional, whatever these beings are, or these things coming here are why they could change that instantly. They could land it right on the white house lawn and solve everything. Um, I feel like the world has changed so much in the last 10 years and things are so polarized and the world is so subdivided and everything. I think if another country came out and, and, and disclosed or whatever, I, I think a very small percentage of people in America would believe it. Really? I really do. I really think a lot well, of people would be like, oh, that's not. Who could What's disclose that? who could disclose that people would believe it? Because, well, I, I even mean, think if, if, if the like president right now disclosed, it. a huge percentage still wouldn't believe. If they said, look, here it is. I, I, I think there's people that wouldn't believe it. And what does that mean? You know, and 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 we don't even know what we're talking about here because this these things are unknown, of course. Um one of the big aspects of our conference is artificial intelligence. And, uh, you know, in reality, they keep talking about these craft and they, they make these 90 degree turns at 7,000 miles an hour. And it's not real because a pilot would die. Their brain would come flying out their head. Yeah. Well, what if that's controlled by artificial intelligence? And what if it's just a machine? That's what we're sending into space. It's logical for me to think that if there was another civilization, they would design this thing. You know, people, people get sick, people die, people need to sleep. AI is going 24 seven. Why couldn't an advanced civilization create something that would a probe that would go out into the universe, come across and collect data. I mean, that's just rational to my brain. We're doing that now. We're already working on the next phase of probes we're going to send to the universe that will be controlled by artificial intelligence. So, you know, what about somebody that got a jump start on us and they're a few million years ahead of us? Why wouldn't they do the same thing? So I, I think that's very plausible in my world. Go ahead, Darren. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think, 
I just don't know. But I would, it seems like the Navy kind of is trying to disclose it, or I don't know what they're doing. Maybe I, I go back and forth because I don't think it's aliens. I really don't. I really think it's, it's something more localized than that. Could very well be. I'm sure a lot of this is, you know, military tests and, and things like that. I mean, that just would make sense to me. Uh, the argument on the other side of that coin is that even if 99% of these things are military tests or whatever, we only need one craft that's from another planet or another civilization or another dimension or whatever for this to be real. So is it possible that one of those is the, it, it, why not? I think Darren's doing his favorite, um, what's that Canadian's name? You're a Canadian, aren't you, Darren? Uh, yeah, Norm McDonald. <laughs> he, he, he sounds like he's doing a Norm McDonald, uh, take on UFOs over there. Well, yeah, I'm not, uh, I think, well, I think there's some shit coming out of the moon that we don't know about, but I, I have seen a UFO. I had, I had, have you really? Yeah, I had an experience. I mean, it wasn't really much. It was like, uh, I thought it was a satellite and then it changed direction. Like I think Graham calls it a fast walker or a fast <laughs> mover. Or, but you know, we've fast been movers, doing don't they call those underwater. Sometimes they call them fast movers underwater. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, maybe fast after, walker, I think is the one. I'm talking. After 11 years of doing the podcast, I've just, the UFOs and the alien things, it's just never really resonated with me. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm interested in the, I think there's a lot of maybe some interdimensional stuff going on. I really think that the alien from another planet is like, um, that's the, that's the, that's the the misinformation. That's the, to me, I feel Darren, what you're suggesting is way more of a leap for me interdimension i mean wow something could travel interdimensionally i mean i know that our science is saying that we do have supposedly 13 dimensions of space or whatever but i that is a big leap for me to think that something could travel from another dimension into ours where well but i would add to that that i don't think that they can if that's what's happening i don't think it can interact with us i think it's just like little like I don't know, glitches, glitches in the matrix. Cause we're in some, you know, some weird simulation, whether God made it or some nerd made it or what happened, but it's, it's mostly fake and it's highly influenceable. It's malleable. And, um, I don't know. I, that's just sort of my take on it. And Hollywood sort of came in with all that alien stuff right at the time when they were really doing shady shit on the american public you know like they when does it really start like the 40s is when i kind of put it the 40s and the 50s the same time they're making like the beatles and all these other fake you know anti-government or you know the whole laurel canyon thing where they make these fake musicians so they're not fake musicians making real music but it's all to some weird manipulated end that we can't understand and now if that's the case then this now what we're getting to now would be the fruition of some weird plan that's been laid out for multiple decades well it's interesting those things that you're exploring there like the simulated universe theory uh i think that is a huge leap and hard for me to digest as well as interdimensional um beings if it for me it, it seems more more believable to stay in the 3D world and not have to have magic or supernatural. Um, the, the universe is, what, 13 billion years old-ish, and we're four and a half billion years old-ish. Why couldn't um, some other race of some other living intelligent life evolve that's got eight billion year jump on us and why couldn't they have Apple computers and technology that just got more and more advanced that they would travel through the universe and go to another galaxy and send a probe here? That, that, that to me, is just very logically possible. I agree. I, I think that's... that's. I agree. It's, I, would, I used to be right there with you on a lot of that, but then it's like the whole thing reeks of intelligent design 
or of some sort of design so much. I mean, I came into this show as an atheist and the one thing that I can't be anymore is an atheist because every avenue you go down points to someone made this thing. I mean, I don't know who it was. I'm not, I don't know why I haven't decided that yet, but it got made and it, there seems to be some, so, I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying that, that, that doesn't mean that they couldn't be traveling here. I mean, I don't know. I don't know where I fit on that, but I think that Earth is more special than that, I guess, in some weird sort of way. I mean, it's weird because Graham's the one who's going to be a Christian first. But um, I do think that uh, that this conventional model that puts us as this fluke system and one of a billion, and I, I'm starting to think that might not be the case. There's something either A, weirdly synchronistic that's worked out so that life can be on this planet. And if that's the case, it could be um, multifactored because you've got sort of an infinite number of options to build it out. But what it starts to look at, what it really starts to look at when you start multiplying the orbits of the planets and all these sorts of things, you look at the moon's relation to earth and it really starts to look like someone made it like really oh yeah really, we got the eclipse really. coming up what are, i mean it's pretty incredible to me that the the moon happens to be exactly big enough to cover the sun exactly in in that you know alignment four, four minute period or whatever yeah that's yeah, pretty it, pretty it, if it was a little bit closer a little bit further you know exactly it's pretty incredible um now, add to that that the moon is 27.3% the size of the Earth, and it takes 27.3 days to do a rotation around the Earth. Is that right? I never heard of that. That's interesting. And now you can start doing these other weird things where you can start um, dividing the planet orbital days by 108, and you will come within... Um, uh, uh, two hundredths of a percent, two two hundredths of a percent of um, of perfect every time. Which, which I mean, I go back and forth with Randall because Randall says that that's that he thinks we're measuring accurately and that there's some sort of wallow. But I don't think we can measure that accurately. I think that we're out. I think that it's perfect. That's that's my interpretation of it. Or the other option is it was perfect. And it was left to its own devices and it sort of wobbled out. But I mean, the chance that we can take every planet in the solar system and play these sort of weird, play these math games with them. It's like either more into that intelligent design or more into some weird simulation or, you know, I don't know what it is, but it all sort of leads to just where I'm, I'm less optimistic after a decade of doing these that we're leaving the solar system than ever. Well, if we, if, if maybe you talk to any of these astronomers, you, you, you get the math on it. And, and, and I mean, there's just what billions of trillions of potential planets out there. And it, you, you start hearing that math and it just seems to me like, don't you think it's pretty Im improbable that we're alone if in the that's universe? That's true. I agree a hundred percent. But when I look at the shit they're saying that from, it just all looks like dots on screen to me. And, you know, they're trying to tell me that these ones have an atmosphere of this and these ones have an atmosphere of that. And I'm like, I'm not even sure you guys went to the moon, man. Oh, you're <laughs> – wow, man. You're on the other side even further out than we are. See, I'm trying to keep, like, the scientific tract of the UFO community, and you're past me. Well, uh, that's interesting. Um so you don't believe in the astronomy that they're saying that there's there's these trillions of you don't think that's real? Well, it's all theoretical. Is it? I yeah, thought you'd be I able to measure and you film and put the, it's all CGI. It's all CGI. Even the pictures wow. of the earth, dude. You can go on the website and they'll tell you straight up that none of those pictures are real. They're all CGI. They're all computer generated from these infrared weird spectrum. You mean from the you, telescopes that are the yeah, the, the yeah, Hubble and things yeah. are are not real That's photographs? All spectrums that you can actually see. So it's all enhanced with CGI. It's all computer generated. All the pictures of the planets in the solar system. That's all computer generated. Now I'm not a flat earther. I think the solar system works exactly how, maybe not exactly, but pretty close to how we think it works. I think we're on a round planet. I think we're on round planet. But when we get out further to that, 
you got to show me something other than dots and say that this is because, well, I think once you get into that, it is theoretical. I mean, stars are theoretical as far as I'm concerned. You mean even within our galaxy? The sun's there, but you, you can't convince me that, I mean, allegedly all these other stars are gas giants, but I think that's a theory and I think I'm right about that. Wow, that is another level, man. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I, I guess I just accept that the astronomy that we've, we've developed is, is real and accurate. And I, I mean, I, I, we have these telescopes up there. Well, I mean, I believe that those are up there and I believe that they're filming these other galaxies and we have devices to measure um it is incredible some of the statistics that they come up with how they can figure all that but um i guess from my view assuming that all of the astronomy that is known to us um within that framework i think these other things are possible agreed i agree with that but i guess my thing is that it's just it's called the theory of relativity you know it's not it's not we're not there yet as far as i'm concerned there's a bunch of problems with it and that's why we can't lock it in yet. And I mean, I'm, I, we've had some guys on the show that are arguing that that the whole thing might be wrong, that the whole that the Earth is at the middle of this thing, and that <laughs> that they. And I mean, I'm I don't know, I don't know enough to know. If well, I don't know either, but I mean, I think that the guys that I trust to know. See, I guess that's where I fall. I I trust Avi Loeb and the guys that are degreed in astronomy. That that that's that they've figured out that, you know, the sun is at the center and that we're revolving around. I thought they've got that math kind of they figured. They think so. they have, for sure. They definitely think they have. But yes, and I'm, I guess I'm believing them. I'm, I'm yeah, I do too. my belief. I, I think I do too. I mean, but I I read all oh, with of, all those fancy telescopes, they can't show me a picture of the moon landing site. I mean, you can show me a picture of a galaxy, another galaxy. But you can't show me a picture of the fucking moon lander. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying. Just saying. I read Charles Fort's books and he went after the astronomers quite a bit. I mean, he 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 was just like laying out example over example of how how they were wrong about all kinds of stuff. And they would never really be able to switch the paradigm until that whole sort of industry was ready to kind of roll over the paradigm, you know, because people would be pointing out UFOs in the sky. Astronomers would be pointing out all kinds of stuff way back then in the 1800s. This is all like 1800s, early 1900s. And they would be, have all these predictions and they would be wrong, but they would be, nobody would care because they were part of the astronomy community. And like they, that him being wrong about that thing didn't change the paradigm. Right. Until, until, until the whole, uh, era changed and then well, there the was a time when everybody did believe the earth was flat and it was only when they figured out that it wasn't that 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 whole paradigm changed you know uh, i like to bring up the story out here the wilson observatory that the top astronomers in the world up until they built that thing thought that our galaxy was the extent of the entire universe Maybe and then they was. built this telescope that was big enough to go outside that they saw other galaxies and they realized we were just a galaxy within a universe as opposed to the entirety of the universe now i i'm i'm making the assumption that they're not lying to me and that those are real and that that happened so um but i you know and it's like the further we can see and the better our telescopes get the why everything just changes and the wider everything gets i mean now there's billions and billions of you know star systems and planets in the in the zone i mean now we're well, to keep coming up with something because it has to. I mean, You're, reality will keep generating something as far as you can look. How do you feel about the simulated universe? Is that really? Well, I don't need. I don't. I don't need to. It doesn't. I don't need it to be simulated. But it's definitely um, being rendered as you look at it. It's definitely being rendered at some level as you look at it because it's malleable. It's. I mean, I, I think that. I think I can. I don't know that I can prove that, but I've talked to a bunch of people who think they can, you know, whether it's through water or this or intention experiments. <laughs> I think that uh, there's a lot to the new thought and the manifestation stuff. I think that I've played it out in my own life, but that could also just be, 
you know, I get myself in the mindset for success. So it works out like that way. It could be a, a chicken or egg scenario, but by that uh, argument, the earth could have been flat. You know, it could have been flat until we decided it wasn't. And once enough people don't think that shit's flat, it's not flat anymore. And, um, you know, that kind of is why I start to think that these, whoever's running the place, like you alluded to earlier, that's why public perception and control is so important to them. Because well, otherwise they could just like, you know, They've got the all the stuff now. They could just like put us all in camps if they really wanted to. If they really, really, really wanted to, the people that are running the place, you know, were a hassle. They could just put sure. us in camps. But then I think our greater consciousness becomes a problem for them. We're too powerful of a force, and that's what we've kind of split up into these different sort of areas of the planet that are malleable by different control factors and they're using our man our our personal manifestation power to steer this thing in different directions and keep their control on it i mean that's as near as i can tell i don't see why else they go to the trouble of controlling the masses when they could just or it could just be a stop revolt i mean that could be the other thing democracy could be the whole scam of democracy could be because they got sick of us tipping over the the apple cart because well, I've got an example of that. The rulers haven't changed. We've been in democracy for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, but it's still the same elite motherfuckers running the place. <laughs> and I've got an example of the malleability. So you've got Caroline Corey on a panel using yeah. science and technology in search of truth, right? I mean, her movie and the stuff she talks about is unbelievable where p- people can teach them, make basically people can teach themselves to have what, you know, superpowers basically what, to see without their eyes, that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, reality is is sort of a little bit more crazy than we even, I mean, it's even. Well, that's crazy. true. I think there's a lot of things. If you guys listen to any of the theoretical physicists and you hear these guys explain this stuff, it sounds beyond science fiction. And then there's the other end of it. And and, and, and Darren, I get your stuff about the synchronicities and the, the feeling, the success and all of that. And then it manifests. I, I, I'm, I'm on board with that. The, uh, the, the thing I was going to mention about the realities are you know you've heard these stories of native americans seeing uh ships on the landscape come from the ocean and they didn't see them because they didn't know what that was so they say that they literally did not see them at all because they didn't know that was new to them so because they didn't know what it was they literally didn't even see it so i i think there's some truth to that i think that uh there's something there, but I do think for me, from my worldview, I think that these guys in astronomy that are studying these topics, um, I, I, I don't think it's, as, it, it could be as off as, as, as you're suggesting in my view, Darren, because it, there's a lot of guys looking at this from a lot of angles. And it, it seems like they, there's sort of a consensus here. I think that's what science is, 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 is building a consensus that, that this is what we accept, that there are different star systems, there are different planetary systems around those star systems, there are different galaxies within this universe, et cetera. Um, that's kind of where I sit. Graham, you're muted. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, Darren, do you have any comments to that? Or <laughs> well, well, that's what they tell us. I mean, that's what they tell us, but it's still <laughs> theoretical. It's still theoretical as near as I can tell. I don't think yeah. no one anyone like they haven't, it's not anything other than a model of how things might work. There's some there was a bunch of prominent people up until uh, a little while ago that thought it was electric. I mean, there seems to be a lot, a lot to that. Thought was electric. The universe. So, I mean, that would put all of that on its head. You know, what happens then? What do you know? But I think in their thing, there's still galaxies and all and all that sort of stuff. And they're looking at something. They're looking at something. But everything else that where they're like, well, this is a this and this is that and this is that far away. And this is a, pff, I don't know, man. I don't where because everything else I'm looking at seems to be just like hubris and other shit piled on top of each other for a couple of hundred years. I mean, nature just published something that we're going to go through on a roundup show tomorrow where 10,000 scientific papers were attracted in 2023. 
And they wow. say that probably only a fraction of what they need to do. But again, isn't that new information got discovered? Like I said, they discovered the earth is round. So therefore God, yeah. they threw out the papers that said. No, it's just they can't recreate it. So there's there's this huge problem in science right now where all of these crisis. studies that there's a replication crisis where all this shit that we took for granted is not rep replicable. So it's 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 junk science, basically. I mean, for lack of a better word, it works sometimes. It doesn't work all the time. But I don't think that really matters to the point of because what I think we're looking at is we're all just sort of they're all looking at stuff. And they have different of the ideas of what that stuff might be, but we're just like, and it's a lot of math. It's a yeah, lot. Yeah, but do you math. think there's a consensus worldwide with our computers and our technology and our telescopes that 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 guys that are trained in this have come to a consensus of what is this far away and this distance, and that, that we have some general consensus of at least our galaxy, if not the universe. There's a consensus. Yeah, there's a there's a ruling party. There's a ruling consensus on what's going on out there, but it's our it's not proven as far as I would argue. It's a it's a consensus of a model that works seems to be works uh, observably, but it's everything other than that is is theoretical. Everything past well, yeah, we can't put it in a lab and measure it because obviously it's light years away. So exactly, we can't get there, and and all the stuff that says it's light years away is basically based on math. So it's not really most of this astronomy stuff isn't really based on what we're looking at because we don't really have anything powerful enough that can actually show us that stuff. You're not actually looking at the planets around Alpha Centauri. You're just like looking at blips on light and doing math calculations, which could be a simulation, you know, the, who knows? Well, listen, I mean, all of these I things are possible. There's no doubt. I just feel that, you know, given the best consensus of what we have, that's all we have to go on. I'm going to trust that these guys that are in astronomy and in the scientific world all over the globe using the latest computer technology, they, they're they're i think they're close i think they're close to what what is actually out there I, I i don't know that they've got it all down perfectly there may be a new discovery 20 years from now or 100 years from now that will give us a whole new idea yeah, yeah, it will change at some point yeah yeah so then would you put like uh then that that would put like gods out of the question no higher power well, that's another whole realm. Wow. Um, well, I, 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 I don't because, know well, how this can just asking, exist. I'm just asking because that's their consensus. The same people that are consensing all this other stuff, their consensus is that, you know, religion is sort of a silly waste of time. Well, why can't they both coexist? Can't both things be true? Well, they seemingly can because when you get them sort of one by one and really press them on it individually, they sort of they'll individually ag agree that there's a higher power. But professionally, oh, Einstein and a lot of these these physicist guys are religious guys. Shockingly, I think Darren's talking about the modern consensus. I think, hey, Darren, probably yeah, I've talked yeah, like like right now the consensus with the the telescopes and all this other stuff is, you know, arguably all of that is to disprove God. Which is weird. Cause there's a whole movement in ufology about demons and angels and uh, like, are these things demonic? I mean, there's a whole sort of, I don't even know if it's, if it's, if well, the whole contact the experience certainly does run the gamut of people that have had experiences that they claim are with non-human intelligences. And it does run the gamut from, uh, this was a ghost. This was this was a relative of mine that died and came came back. Uh, this was a whatever uh, being, mystical being, fairy, uh, troll, whatever it may be, um, alien. A lot of people in the subculture think that these are the same phenomenon. People are describing it through their lens. Yeah, yeah. Somebody that grew up in a religious family would see a ghost or would see a possibly a, a religious figure. An angel, for example, an angel, a ghost, or somebody more scientific might might say it's an alien from another planet. Uh, somebody that's into super science might say it's an interdimensional being visiting me. So 
Yeah, or like gin and elves and stuff hundreds of years exactly, ago. Exactly, 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 exactly. And I think those have just evolved into modern day abduction cases um, or contactee cases. And, you know, again, we're dealing with an unknown. I think it's fair to say that, that we don't know. But we've got different people with from different backgrounds making um, pretty interesting claims that something, and, and even back to those days, think about this. So something's been going on for years, at least, at the very least, it's a psychological phenomenon, but something is going on where people believe they're interacting with non-human beings. That's been going on as long as we can tell, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to get to the bottom of that. And people like Whitley Strieber and some of these guys who have claimed to have these direct experiences, I, I want to hear them out. And I want to hear, you know, there's a lot of people with these claims. I want to I want to see if we can't get a little closer to what it might actually be or or, or what I would think it would be. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. Do you have where do you fall in on the CE5 stuff? Where do I fall on that? Yeah, do you do that kind of stuff? Like Graham goes out and tries to call UFOs and... Well, I, I use... Oh, you've done that, video. Graham? Yeah, yeah I haven't in a while. Yeah, I, I have did it work for you? Yeah, it really did work for us. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. Yeah, I, I've yeah. heard a lot of people with success stories of that. It, it's it's, but I'm not sure that I really want to do it anymore, or whether I should be playing around with that kind of stuff. Honestly, I don't know if we should be trying to make contact with anything unless we're pretty damn sure of what we're doing. And and uh, maybe if we've been through some training or or some. Would you play with a Ouija board? No. No. You seem very skeptical about these topics, yet you wouldn't do a CE5 and you oh, wouldn't no, do I'm a not Ouija skeptical board. at all. I'm totally oh, just your brother there, Darren. All right, gotcha. Darren, Darren. I'm the skeptical one, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> on this. I'm on like all in on everything. No, yeah. Norm MacDonald again right there, man. Coffee. This dude gave himself a coffee fucking anima. <laughs> Graham, tell me the truth. Has, has people call him Norm MacDonald before? No, no, you're the first one. I think it's yeah, yeah, great, you flip yeah. on a Norm MacDonald thing, he sounds exactly like Darren, especially like when he's doing a take on something. It's yeah. great. Yeah, I like it. And he's got that Canadian thing too. That's great, Darren. Yeah. Yeah. Usually we get Bob and Doug. Yeah. Yeah, we get Bob and Doug. So I mean, yeah, it's just I I we saw stuff in our groups. We had great experiences, but I just, you know, who knows what they are, right? Who knows what they are? I mean, they you know, there's been so many stories of things pretending to be something that they're not, or maybe that we're not in a in a protective enough state for him i mean i like i wouldn't play with a ouija board i mean I, now i don't even know if i should be making contact with anything regardless of what the stephen are. hawking uh, uh years ago made a has a quote that he said that uh i don't know why we're trying to reach out to 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 extraterrestrials because you know we, we may not know who we're contacting it may not be a good idea mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, we should try to be quiet in our little neighborhood as opposed to reaching out, which is an interesting thing coming from Stephen Hawking. Yeah, Christy well, Crinkle said in the chats there she had a super bad experience with a Ouija board and HS. I, I'm assuming that means high school because that's where we played around yeah, that's in, nice. in high school. Yeah, sure, and and, um, and then we did see a ghost and a turret um, in a, in my friend's house. Sorry, we took pictures of a ghost. Um, oh yeah, in a turret, but not we didn't see it with our with our eyes. Um, but we knew it was haunted already. So anyway, anyways, this is back in the eighties, but I mean, I, you know, I just don't think it's, uh, as a skeptical one, I don't fuck with that shit. I won't go near it. I won't do it. Wait a minute. You're Mr. Skeptical. If it's not real, then why wouldn't you do it? Because it is real. I think it is real. I think <laughs> oh, you think that, that stuff is real. All right. I yeah, guess you. hundred percent. I don't think that uh, you should be messing around with, malleable reality that's so then you do think that there are other realms of non-human intelligence that 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 Ouija board would contact for example i don't know that i think that but i don't know enough it's not the juice ain't worth the squeeze you know <laughs> i would put it i'd probably like still like 80 percent don't believe it but 20 percent is enough not to bother you know i because i can manifest enough success without sort of Fucking with any of that stuff, and it just seems like a bad idea. Just in case, I mean, it's like I hold out. So you're just playing it safe. I got yeah, yeah. yeah it's just why, 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 why mess? I haven't it? ruled out deathbed repentance if it turns out that the Christians might be right. Gotcha. And I mean, we got. How, so do you know? Here's a question: We've had like a ton of people because uh, you talk to a lot of people. How many people have you seen like an uptick in people finding God lately? 
Well, I haven't noticed that, but I haven't been doing a show for a little while. So uh, that's interesting. Have you guys noticed that? There's more belief in that? We've had like a, a measurable percentage of past guests mm-hmm. that not just like, you know, it like people that you'd be like, what? Really? You know, like, like really people that would catch you kind of off guard and like over and over and over and over. It's definitely a running theme lately. In, in That's interesting. I wonder if it's because the world seems more, uh, there's more turmoil and nonsense yeah. and fighting and yeah. hilarity and whatever that yeah. maybe they're drawn to such a thing. I don't know. Yeah. That could be they're drawn good- to fight it. And more overt symbolism. I mean, there is more overt satanic symbolism as well. I mean, there's a lot of that going on. So, so Christy, speaking of that, Christy says, uh, yeah, my friend's eyes rolled in the back of her head and she started spitting up blood. She came to and literally had no idea what happened. And yes, wow. yes it was in high school. Yeah, that'll freak you out as a, as a high school student. They have those videos on YouTube of people doing that with a Ouija board and shit like that happens, you know, if they're real. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's that, that's the problem with today's world, man, between AI and Photoshop and crazy people. It, it could be, it, you never know to trust it though. You know, maybe that whole thing staged or fake or whatever, but yeah, but it is interesting. Some of those videos are pretty good and pretty compelling as well. I've seen them. Um, what about Skinwalker Ranch? Do you, is there people on your, in your conference that talk about that? The yeah, we have Wayne Ollinger, who's mm-hmm. the owner of uh, Blind Frog Ranch, which is the one that's just north of Skinwalker Ranch. And uh, he has had a lot of experiences on different levels, um, top to bottom. And he's going to be there talking about that. So that's right. interesting stuff, too. The ranches all of a sudden are a hot thing. You got Skinwalker Ranch, Blind Frog Ranch. Mm-hmm. There's a, a ranch called Bradshaw Ranch in, in in Arizona that's that's rising in popularity as well, where there's supposedly a lot of uh, anomalous activity. And it's interesting how like some of these things have everything. They have Bigfoot and they have UFOs and they have, you know, these are just sort of hot spots. People seem to feel there's a lot of reported sightings. So who knows? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm glad you 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 got some people talking about that at the conference. Anyways, that that'll be good. Well, I do find it all fascinating. I I I really do, and I think I think a lot of these people need to be taken seriously, and a lot of people are studying this, and there's a lot of it warrants scientific investigation. And it's where I kind of fall all the time. I mean, yeah, you yeah. know, we've got Danny and Brinkley there who talks about, you know, he was like hit by lightning. He's died. He feels like he crossed over. And he talks about what it's like coming back and what it was like on the other side. Richard Martini's talking about that too, about crossing over to the afterlife, to the other side. So, you know, that's yet another dimension. And we have people here ab- about um, psychedelics and, 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 and the ayahuasca thing and how that's entering another realm and talking to another non-human and, intelligence and overlapping with the, some of the same type of entities that people are seeing in abductions and ufo encounters so it, it is it's really hard to separate all this phenomena out it really is it really is i mean the difference between dmt experience and a alien experience and a <laughs> uh, apparition uh, you know a uh apparition in front appearing before you you know what, whatever it is these people are claiming to have these first person contacts with a non-human intelligence and, and, and wow. And there's a lot of them. And, and, and this isn't people, you know, that are just faking it or whatever. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of that, but there's, there's a lot of people that you've talked to. They've, they've, their lives have been destroyed. They've gotten divorced. They've lost their jobs because they've had these experiences. Now, now, now why can't we just listen to them and see, see what they got and why I think it certainly warrants further investigation and, and, and what else could it be? Let's, let's, let's take a look is what I feel. Yeah. Yeah. So I do want to ask you about the Hollywood Disclosure Alliance and, but also I just saw this post tonight before we got on the air and I thought I'd ask you about it, but so, supposedly someone's posting here that Chris Mellon admits that the 2017 New York times UFO article was not journalism, but part of a plan to sell UFOs to Congress. Have, have you seen that controversy? Well, that's, no, <laughs> I haven't seen that specifically, but I mean, yeah, who knows? Maybe. I mean, it, the, the, the dealing with these unknowns is so tough, you know, yeah. who, who who's yeah. manipulating who, how hard, high does it go up? And, you know, it's, it's, it's so hard to say. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of just good to keep neutral on a lot of this stuff. I would think, I mean, that's kind of what my, yeah, I'm, I'm just open. I just, I don't like dismissing it out of hand and I don't like giving it all the, uh, uh, and I don't like when somebody's got all the answers and they come to me and they're like, Oh yeah, I know it's this, it's aliens that they're from here. And this is the guy's name and this is it. Okay. That's, that's harder to swallow for me than, than the people that are speculating on what could it be yeah. and, and, and that there are alternative ideas of, of, of the possibilities. So what does Hollywood think about all this right now? I mean, Oh yeah. You were asking about the Hollywood disclosure Alliance. Well, yeah. You know, I think that's sort of a group that we're trying to, uh, commingle people in this community with um, Hollywood. So sorry to make sure we're on the same page to get the right message out. Maybe, maybe instead of these fanciful stories, perfect example is the Travis Walton case. You know, Travis Walton is one of the most credible cases, one of the respected guys in this community uh, for a contactee experience. And, you know, he has this amazing story. And it, it, it's shocking to me how. It's not enough that he has this amazing story with an interaction with a, let's call it an alien being. Welcome, then then they do his story, in the story, uh, Fire in the Sky, excuse me, and, and, and they have to Hollywood it up and change the story. It's like, really, it's not wild enough that, that the, the real story, word for word, you've got to make it even more. So I think part of the goal there is to Let's get the right message out from the people that are making these these claims. And, and the other thing is a sort of a networking thing to, to kind of blend these two communities together. Um, we're going to have several people that, you know, Hollywood people are going to come that are into this topic. Uh, Thomas Jane is a well-known actor. He's written a book about UFOs. Um, Dave Foley is a, is a famous actor, and, and and he was from Kids in the Hall. And yeah, they, I thought that he's, was. He's him. got that he's huge podcast. You know, he's he's going to come there. He he's very interested in the topic as well, and he has a very very similar viewpoint on things as I do. He's very much, um, you know, I f it feels like it warrants more more attention. D Wallace is going to be there. She was the mom in ET. We're going to play ET. She's going to introduce it. We got a lot of stuff like that. So it's just, there's so many things going on. You know, we have eight stages going at the same time. Wow. We have the, the actual Mitchell Hedges crystal skull there. You can, you can visit the skull. There's, um, there's just constantly stuff going on. And, and, um, it's just like this carnival of, of lectures and, and panels and different things to, to, to experience. And then, then of course we start our parties and everybody uh, heads to the bar and we all talk about what we learned that day and what we heard that day. And you get to interact with the speakers and then the speakers interact with each other. And it's great because everybody there is for the conference. It, it, it's, we buy the whole hotel out. So everyone there, it's like a pilgrimage, everybody that's there we have thousands of people there and, and we're all there for the conference. So it's not like you just have to find your little group. So it makes it a very unique experience. So the Hollywood and Disclosure Alliance will have sort of like a presence there then? Yeah, they have a they have a booth there and they're going to uh they, they have a panel. So they're going to talk about the group and 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 their views on these topics uh during their panel. Right. On. What about the other guy? Uh whatever happened to him? The uh Blink 182 dude. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's he's still out there uh uh what's his name? Uh Rob, Tom Rob? Tom DeLong. Tom DeLong. Thank you very much. Tom DeLong. Yeah, he did the uh, To the Stars Academy. And then, uh, you know, there's a lot of different opinions about To the Stars Academy. And um, I know Blink 182 went back out on the road. So I don't know. I, as far as I know, he's still, you know, in this community. He's still very interested in the topic. And uh, we'll have to see what the future holds for him. Yeah. <laughs> They didn't because it came out like they're going to crack the code a few years ago. I remember Joe. Well, season. he's hell bent. You know, he 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 seemed to have some serious connections there, and and some people were feeding him information, real or not real. And he um, he wrote those books. And, he wrote those books with uh, uh, geez, I can't think of the guy's yeah, name. I know his name. Uh, I know Peter Lavenda. Peter Lavenda. Look at you with these names. Oh, that felt great on the brain, man. Nice work. Peter Lavenda. Yeah, they wrote those big books and uh, a lot of information in there. And, uh, you know, again, we're dealing with an unknown, so it's hard to say. But but certainly 
fascinating to speculate and to try to decipher um, as much of it as we can. So how many people are going to be there? Like thou- you said thousands? Yeah, we'll have between two and 3,000 people there for sure. Yeah, it, it should be it should be great. And uh, where so is it again? It, the hotel in, did you say California? Was it? It's, uh, it's out in Indian Wells, right, right outside of Palm Springs. It's this beautiful resort beautiful pool it's just it's fantastic out there you're out you know near the desert in a giant beautiful resort and um a couple hours outside of la it's it's just a fantastic setting for such an for such a a meeting yeah that's great that sounds fantastic i mean those those types of conferences where where the speakers aren't just coming for their lecture and leaving right away, like they're hanging around and sort of mingling amongst each other. Those are amazing because that's the whole thing. I think that's what separates this conference from, from many conferences or normal academic conferences. Uh, you know, this is like an academic scientific conference where, where those guys hang out with you and, and, and share their views with you. And, yeah. and yeah, they say one thing on stage and then later maybe they say even more to you, you know, you get to hang out with them. You get to kind of, mm-hmm. And I like them talking amongst themselves exactly. to see where they're at too, which is always fun for me. Yeah, you get to hang around, listen to them, talk to each other. Something that's like that. that's the, the the best to, to yeah. me. I really uh, that stuff you can't get online. You know, we do a virtual online um, live stream as well. We're going to do that this year for people who can't make it to the conference. But but not coming, you miss out on stuff like that, and that's the gold right there. Yeah. Getting to interact with these guys firsthand. Yeah. And you know, there a lot of these guys have got a lot of incredible stories and some incredible research, and it's uh, where, fascinating where, stuff. Where do people fly into for that? And, and right into Palm Springs. On, right into Palm Springs. And is there anything else uh, that you want to mention that we didn't touch on yet? Um. Well, it's it's you can either fly into L.A. and drive out there. It's a couple hours, or you can fly right into Palm Springs. Um. It's just it's just it's really great to be there in person. Is what I'll stress is that I think. You know, hearing these guys firsthand talk about it and then getting to talk to them personally, interacting with them, interacting with other people that have maybe heard another speaker before or recommends a different speaker to you or exposes you to yet another new idea. Um, that's how I learned about the the, the simulated universe. We had um, uh, Rizwan Verk was a yeah. contact one year and he, t- he you know he's he's a big talk about that and, and and then you know i get to talk to him and he's this fascinating guy and it's like yeah there's almost something here you know and and it's it's just more compelling being there in person there's an energy to it there's a symbiosis going on with other people and uh it's also a lot of fun we have live bands you know we have parties every night it's 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 just a good time Looks like you got a, a Skywatch bus excursion too, and maybe a CE5 session as well. Yeah, we have a, a bus with Mark D'Antonio and Ben Hansen that goes out into the desert. Oh. And, and and you have this, you know, and those two guys are amazing. Too. They're amazing astronomers. And, 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 and he will point out things in the sky and tells you what's a satellite and what's a planet and how to d- determine what's different and that kind of thing. It's really interesting stuff. Where can people get tickets? contact in the desert.com you can get you get discounted hotel rooms right there too everything's at contact in the desert.com right on buddy thanks for coming on absolutely had a lot of fun guys yeah it's, good. it's, it's yeah, fun enjoy. to bounce these ideas around yeah, yeah, yeah thanks sure. captain we'll have to do this again sometime absolutely brother good luck with the conference or work on that norm mcdonald impression you can always uh maybe i'll start doing a bit you know i'm telling you you could it'd be hilarious I love He's it too. And I'll make fun of him being dead. Just like he would. <laughs> <laughs> he would do right. that. He'd probably be up there appreciating it. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's right. All right, Captain Ron, you have a good night. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care now. Yeah. And that was a chat with Captain Ron contact at the desert. What'd you think? Well, I, I don't know. I'm looking at my calendar. thinking. Oh yeah. I figured I would be all fucking riled up for UFOs after that. <laughs> <laughs> It reminds me of that. It reminds me of the one I went to and, and, you know, a little bit of the paradigm symposium that we did before uh, starting up the podcast, you know, it was very similar. You could drive to Scablands and then just keep driving. Just keep driving down there. It's end of May. So when's our trip? May 15th? 13th right? to the 18th. 18th. Or, uh, thir- yeah, 13th to the 18th. And then it'd yeah. be another like, you know, it's another 12 hours, I think, or so. Yeah, it's going to be. And then down the whole coast. You'd probably, you just want to fly. You'd want to yeah. fly. It's got to be three, four days in each direction, unless you go like 
straight down to Vegas and cut over from there. Then it's like only 20 hours. Yeah. Still anyway, like a long drive. Yeah. A long drive. Flights are a bitch right now, though. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's like they don't uh, want us to fly. I swear they don't want us to fly right now. Imagine that. Imagine that. It's almost can you, like. Can you request like non Boeing planes or. Uh, I don't meanwhile, know. like. Meanwhile, you're going to go chat about UFOs and all this extraordinary technology and the, and the planes. And the are planes going to break. What you want to do is just like check the flight numbers and like just check through that, I guess. You can probably figure out before you book your flights. Yeah. And big thanks to Captain Ron for coming on the show. Big thanks to you guys for listening. Even bigger thanks if you're one of our uh, supporters. We don't have many. We could use more. I think we're down under 1% now. You know, more people listening than ever. Less people support. And I get it. It's tough out there. Um, but if you can, guys, head over to America.ca slash support. If you're getting some value from the show, send some value back our way. Even a buck a month. That would help. Two bucks a month, five bucks a month, ten bucks a month. Hey, maybe you're not hurt and you sign up for a hundred bucks a month, and that takes care of like, you know, forty people that are hurting, and everybody wins, and uh, we get to stay on the air. Most importantly, America.ca slash support guys if you can, when you can. Adultbrain.ca for the audio books. Uh, GrimericaOutlaw.ca for the more controversial stuff. Contact at the cabin.com for. Art, we, we didn't bring up that we kind of like half stole his branding. Um, <laughs> contact at thecabin.com for all our trips. Contact in the desert for all his trips. Other than that, we love you guys. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next week. Stuff dreams are made and popsicle sticks. Please look at my rocket ship schematics. Tell me it can fly to the moon. Tell me I'm not a lunatic. Silver steel.